As the nights get longer and it's all cold and dark outside, the number one thing that I always want to do is get all snuggled up with a nice comfy drink and watch some really good movies. I usually tend to go for a frazzled English woman rom-com, a horror movie, or a nice simple anime about the birth and death of gods in a highly religiously coordinated post-apocalyptic setting with coelacanths. But what about movies for us Warhammer fans? Well, if you've been into Warhammer for a while, then you may have found out the hard way that if you want to watch your favorite franchise on the big screen, then you are mostly out of luck unless you want to watch this or this. And don't get me wrong, I want to give the Warhammer official movies their time in the spotlight. And I'm going to be doing just that in an upcoming video in the future where I talk about a lot of really weird Warhammer media that's been a bit lost to time. But this video is going to be about my personal top 10 favorite Warhammer movies, which each bear a striking resemblance to the setting and will definitely scratch your grimdark futuristic itches no matter which faction is your favorite. Whoosh. So I'm going to be ranking these movies that I've selected in a bit of a tier list sort of fashion, starting with ones which are a little bit Warhammer-y and ending in the ones which you can pretty much watch scene for scene as a Warhammer official movie. So make sure you stick around until the end to see those ones. And of course, if you think that I've missed one or there's a movie that's your favorite that you think should be on this list, then please pop it down in the comment section below and tell us what it is and why you like it and why you think we should watch it so that we can all expand our Warhammer movie nights together. So without further ado, let's get into the first entry on the list. We're gonna start off with a movie which actually does have Space Marines mentioned in it in some way. It's Doom. Chances are, if you like Warhammer and you like playing games, then you've probably at some point played Doom because Doom has quite a lot of really satisfying resemblances to the Warhammer franchise. You play as Doom Guy or the Doom Slayer who is a heavily armored Space Marine. And yes, he is technically a Space Marine. He's a Marine in space and if you Google the Doom Slayer, all the articles say that he's a space marine. So yes, the Doom Slayer is canonically a space marine. Take that. You go around with big guns fighting hordes and hordes of demons from hell on Mars or on the moon or sometimes just actually in hell. And at a glance, these furious red bloodthirsty monsters could be mistaken for the demonic red ranks of the chaos god Korn. But this isn't about the game. It's about the movie that came out in 2005 named Doom featuring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And whilst the movie is loosely based on the games and wasn't hugely well received when it came out, it's still a movie about a big cool space marine fighting evil demons with a chainsaw in space, so it definitely makes a list. Warhammer 40k is set in the far future of the year 40,000 and the prequel to this setting is the Horus Heresy which happened in the year 30,000. And since the game's release 40 years ago we now have a bunch of pictures and stories and illustrations and books and games and now even cinematic animations which depict these settings in extraordinary detail. But I'm a bit of a history nerd and I crave the deep old lore and I'm desperate to know and especially to see what happened between our time now sitting here in the year 2023 and the year 30,000 to get us looking from this to this. And there is a movie which may help you mentally bridge that gap. And that movie is Blade Runner. A lot of people, including me, have discovered that the movie Blade Runner feels a little bit like it's set just after the Warhammer universe's age of progress and right at the beginning of the dark age of technology. Blade Runner 1982 is set in the grim dark future of the year 2019 where a borderline dystopian humanity finds themselves suffering the consequences of an advanced and menacing man-made AI called Replicants. And for me personally, one of the most fascinating parts of 40k history and lore is pretty much told in this movie. Much of humanity's history in 40k is very secretive and not set in stone due to a lot of the lore as we know it being delivered from unreliable and highly ecclesiastical sources from within the Imperium of Mankind itself. 
But we do know that for a while in the Age of Progress, which occurred between the first and fifteenth millennium, that humanity advanced, created interstellar travel, and developed AI to aid them in their progress. Which, as it always tends to do in these kind of stories, went horribly wrong. <laughs> Blade Runner, with its grim and often dark cyberpunk setting, really does at times feel like it could be a little glimpse into the history of humanity as we know it in the 40k setting. Next up is one for my Dark Eldar or Drakari lovers, it is, of course, the Hellraiser franchise. I remember mentioning this in my weird Warhammer miniature iceberg video, but if you're a fan of the Drakari, then you're in luck, because you pretty much have an entire series of movies which are about Dark Eldar. For those who have never seen Hellraiser before, the movies revolve around the horrific interdimensional torture weirdos from Hell known as the Cenobites, who describe themselves as explorers in the further regions of experience. And if that sounds familiar, it's because it sounds like Dark Eldar, just replace Hell with Gamora and you got it. When the Cenobites are called upon, they pop over to exact some pretty graphic sadomasochistic pleasures onto whoever summoned them, and the designs are generally pretty cool and I like the movies a lot. And if you watch these movies, it is so blatantly obvious how influential they were on the actual Warhammer Dark Eldar range back in the day. In fact, a lot of, if not all of the old homunculus and rack miniatures wouldn't look out of place in any of the Hellraiser movies at all. And this old homunculus here even holds what looks to be a puzzle box, which is an artifact lifted directly from the movies themselves. I could go on and on about Hellraiser and its influence in the Dark Eldar miniature range, but if you are new to the movies, then I recommend you watch Hellraiser 1 just to kind of get the gist of it, Hellraiser 2 Hellbound, where you get a great glimpse of this labyrinth, which very much could be in the depths of Komora, and definitely for some real Warhammer vibes, Hellraiser 4 bloodline, which is held entirely on a spaceship in the future, and includes one of my favourite Jakari homunculus-coded lines from any Hellraiser movie ever. I am pain. If you're a fan of the Necromunda, Palanite Enforcers, the Adeptus Arbites, or you just like the idea of Warhammer Cops in general, then you're probably not coincidentally also a huge fan of Judge Dredd, and if not, then you should be. And if you're also a big Warhammer history nerd like me, then you already know that there is in fact a pre-existing history and relationship between Warhammer Games Workshop and the Judge Dredd franchise. In fact, for a short period of time, Citadel produced a small amount of Judge Dredd miniatures and even a role-playing game. Judge Dredd even featured on the cover of this classic White Dwarf magazine, which is one of my all-time favourites. Although Games Workshop has for a long time ceased to own the right to this IP, you can still see the influences of Judge Dredd and the cool guy cops of the far dystopian future in the designs of things like the Necromunda Enforcers, and especially the Adeptus Arbites miniature range. But back to the movies. I kind of feel like Judge Dredd 1995 and the movie Dredd in 2012 both kind of scratch different itches for me. The 1995 version with Sylvester Stallone, another canonical war Hammer character, is I think highly underrated as a very well made classic 80s sci fi film, and the whole thing again just has such wonderful old rogue tradery vibes and is definitely adept as Arbites coded. But what I mean by that is that the Arbites are pretty much entirely based off the judges. I mean, look at these guys, it's, it's very, very blatant who they're supposed to be. However, the 2012 version, which I really like and I don't know why it's not more popular to be honest, definitely feels a little bit more grim and gritty and like it takes place in the Necromunda Underhive, due to it being mostly set in a big tall tower block with cool gang fights being the main theme. Either way and whichever one you pick, they're a great couple of movies to get you in the mood for some good old Warhammer crime fighting. 
Now for a movie which feels like it's set in a very different kind of Warhammer environment, and coincidentally another one of my all-time favourite movies which have made it onto this list, it's Alien. Alien is an absolutely classic movie which I think everyone should be watching at least once a year, but next time you do watch it, try to imagine the commercial spaceship the Tug Nostromo as a Warhammer Hulk, and the aliens to be Tyranids, and boom, you have a Warhammer movie which reads a lot like the game Space Hulk. You know, just a bunch of lowly, underprepared humans trapped in a tight and often claustrophobic environment with a horrific alien creature. But like, instead of a lowly human, they're transmutated super soldiers in power armour, but whatever, it's pretty much the same thing. Maybe you should be watching the sequel Aliens. Maybe that's a little bit closer to Space Hulk after all, I don't know. So here's a movie which prior to me making this video I actually hadn't seen, but when I told some friends that I was planning on making this video they told me to watch this movie, because apparently John Blanche cites it as being a huge inspiration for the look and the feel of the Warhammer fantasy setting, so I watched it and oh my god they were not wrong. If you're into Warhammer fantasy battles or you just want to muster up some cosy comfy hype for the new release of the game coming soon, then Jabberwock should definitely be on the top of your watch list. It's got all of those good old 80s fantasy vibes and has just enough silly and funny grimdark ridiculousness to make it distinctively Warhammer-y. I posted some pictures on my social media of this movie as I was watching it, and to my surprise I got a bunch of messages asking if I had posted AI generated Warhammer artwork, which I honestly don't really know how to feel about, but it definitely proves that this movie has absolutely nailed the grim dark fantasy aesthetic. And speaking of movies and things in general which heavily influenced the Warhammer franchise, how could we possibly make this list and not mention Dune? Dune the book series is often cited as being one of the main sources of inspiration for the Warhammer 40k setting as it was being developed in the 80s, and if you look at it and you look at the two together then yeah you can definitely see it. From the themes of old nobility and royalty in the far dystopian future spanning the universe, psychers, lasgar, navigator mutants, and the literal concept of a god emperor who wants to conquer the galaxy, Warhammer and Dune certainly share a lot of overlapping themes and concepts. And luckily for us, that means that the Dune movies end up reading as pretty 40k-ish. 40k-y. 40k-y. <laughs> The new Dune movie is really good and I had a thoroughly great time watching it, and hopefully that will continue when eventually the new ones come out. But I think that I will always love the old version with Kyle MacLachlan just a little bit more because it's just so fantastically weird. And if you're looking for a movie which really does have those 80s rogue tradery Warhammer vibes, then the 1984 version of Dune should definitely be the one that you're reaching for. Now we are obviously going to be talking about Mad Max, but I'm going to cheat just a little bit here because I really struggled to figure out just one movie to put on this list, so I'm going to talk about a few of my favourites. So let's start by talking about the most recent addition to the Mad Max franchise, Fury Road, which start to finish is an absolutely incredible movie that I could not recommend highly enough. But if you are into Warhammer 40k orcs, then you're probably going to enjoy this movie just a little bit more. This whole movie is a speed freaks loving orc kit bashers dream. In fact, I've always said that if you change the hue of the movie so that the humans were green, a lot of the scenes just feel like they're from a Warhammer 40k orc movie. There's shooters, fast buggies, ramshackle weapons, a whole goth rocker, and the war boys even let out a mighty wah at one point. So if you're feeling particularly orky or you need some green skin inspiration, I definitely recommend popping on Fury Road whilst you hobby. And of course I'm not going to move on from Mad Max without mentioning how much of an influence it had on the game system Necromunda, and in particular the Ash 
wastes. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome is one of my favourite Mad Max movies, and it definitely feels like it's set entirely in the Necromunda ash wastes. I mean, it's literally perfect for that setting, there's like no notes here. Even the characters in the movie resemble gangers from the Underhive, from the brawling Goliaths, the freaky Eshers, cool biker Orlocks, to these little weirdos here which look pretty much exactly like these miniatures here. The whole thing truly does feel like an official Necromunda ash waste movie, and I honestly couldn't recommend it highly enough. If you've ever felt like watching a movie which is about Tyranids versus Cadians, then this is the movie for you because it's pretty much exactly that. In Starship Troopers, a bunch of plucky kids join the space army to fight horrific bug aliens or the Arachnids. They're sent across space to the aliens' home planet where they find that the creatures aren't as easy to kill as they had initially thought. The whole movie is a solid favourite of mine. The humour and the world building is absolutely spot on the actors are fantastic and the characters are all really interesting and likeable, some more likeable than others. And if you're a fan of Warhammer, it's really not hard to trick your mind into believing you're watching a fun guardsman movie. From the design of the uniform to the dying in their hundreds against a bunch of space bugs, it's all there. Also, fun fact, the Starship Trooper books make reference to power armour and share that terminology for their fighting suits with the Warhammer 40k franchise. It's time to round off this list with the movie that you've probably all been screaming at your screen for me to mention because it's 100% the best unintentional Warhammer movie ever made and of course that movie is Event Horizon. Event Horizon is often referred to in the Warhammer fandom as being a pretty accurate prequel to the Warhammer 40k universe and if you've seen the movie then you probably understand why and if you haven't seen it then warning there are going to be some spoilers ahead. Head. This movie follows a mission to try and rescue the husk of a mysterious spaceship, the Event Horizon, after its distress signal is discovered. What they find on the ship, however, isn't a crew in distress because there doesn't seem to be any survivors at all. As more and more unspeakable horrors aboard the ship are uncovered, the rescue team discover that the ship's jump drive, which aids in galactic travel, is unfortunately opening up a portal to some sort of hellish other dimension which resides outside of the known universe. And if that plotline doesn't sound like it's exactly about humanity's first interactions with the warp and chaos and things like that, then I don't know, because it does, it's literally that storyline. Event Horizon is a fantastic sci-fi horror movie that I love deeply and I watch regularly, and I think it definitely deserves first place on this list because with very very little cognitive effort, you can watch it start to finish and imagine that you're watching a really well made cinematic prequel to Warhammer 40,000. And that's it! In my 10 plus years of loving Warhammer, and my, I don't know, 25 plus years of loving movies, those are the movies that I feel have the most crossover with the franchise and scratch my grimdark itch the most. But since you made it all the way to the end of the video and recommending movies is one of my all time favourite things to do, I'm quickly going to rattle off a few honourable mentions which I didn't quite have the time to put in fully in this video. Metropolis, Krull, Flash Gordon, Lord of the Rings, obviously. Hard to be a god. I've not seen this movie, but apparently it's good. Terminator, because Necrons. Predator, because it's literally just Katachan versus aliens. And interestingly enough, the movie Annihilation, because I'm a huge fan of the weird fiction works of Jeff Vandermeer, and I really do think that this movie does read as a very Zinchy movie, so if you're into Zinch, give it a watch. And with that, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, Thank you for being rogues. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye bye.